Load brick switch or switch disconnector are most commonly used in ring main units and also you will find them uh, attached to for the protection of transformer. But most of the people get it confused with the circuit breaker uh, and in this video you will have a clear understanding about what is a load brick switch and what is the difference between the disconnector, the load brick switch and the circuit breaker. Hello everybody welcome to the channel if you are new here my name is Gaurav J. On this channel I simplify electrical engineering. So if you are interested in learning electrical engineering in easiest way then make sure you subscribe because there is a lot of content that is going to be of a great help to you. So load brick switch. Now before we understand what is a load brick switch that there are few definitions that we should understand and those are the definition given by the IEC standard right. So let us understand that first. So the first let us understand what do we mean by a switch. So IEC states that a switch is a mechanical switching device capable of making carrying and breaking currents under normal conditions. Now this word is really important here normal circuit conditions which may include specified operating overload conditions and also carrying for a specified time currents under abnormal circuit conditions such as those of a short circuit. Now what IC is saying here is you can call something a switch when it has capability of making, making means uh, uh, opening, uh, carrying and also the breaking normal system current right we are not talking about the abnormal condition we are talking about the normal current. So let's say if your system's normal current is 200 ampere then if your switch is able to make that current break that current and carry that current then uh, that can be called as a switch right and also the switch will have a capability to carry the short time currents which can occur because of faults for a specified time limits right. So that is switch. Now moving on the next definition that you should understand is a disconnector. Now the IEC says a disconnector is a mechanical switching device which provides in the open position an isolating distance in accordance with the specified requirement and this is really important. Disconnector is not a switch. Switch is what? Switch is something that can carry make and break the current. Disconnector on other hand they are not capable of doing any of those things. Even the rated normal currents they cannot break, they cannot make or they cannot, they can carry of course but they, they cannot make and break that current. Even short circuit currents they can only carry for specified time limits but they cannot do anything with that and it is that is the reason it is called as uh, offload device. But the difference between switch and disconnector is that disconnector also provides an isolating distance isolating distance. So if you have seen a, a high voltage disconnector when it opens you will see uh, it maintains a very big distance between the two live contacts right and that provides a significant isolating distance uh, in, in the switch yard and that is more secure than the switch. Switch application is limited up for, to low voltage and medium voltage but disconnector you will find it in medium voltage, high voltage and extra high voltage as well. So both the things are different right clear understood what is disconnector then moving on to understand what is load brick switch or IEC call it as basically a switch disconnector. So let's see what is the definition here. So switch switch disconnector is a switch which in the open position satisfies the isolating requirement specified for a disconnector. IEC has clearly defined the switch, a switch disconnector which is nothing but the combination of switch so it can definitely make break and carry the normal system current plus when it is opened it will also act as a disconnector right you see switch in which the open position satisfies the isolating requirement specified for a, a disconnector so load brick switch you can simply say it is a combination of a switch and also a disconnector clear so it will be able to make and break the normal system current and also carry the rated short circuit current for a specified time. These things cannot break the short circuit current right keep that thing in the mind and that is the difference between the circuit breaker and the load brick switch. Circuit breaker is able to make the normal system current uh, break it and also break the short circuit current. Load brick switch or switch disconnector are not capable of doing that. 
right that is the major difference between circuit breaker and load break switch and also this load break switch uh, the, their application is limited to 52 kV which is the distribution uh, level only you will not find any of these things in high and extra high voltage circuit breaker there you need to have a dedicated isolator and a dedicated circuit breaker as well so if you want me to make a dedicated video explaining the differences between the disconnector, the load break switch and the circuit breaker, then comment, compare in the comment section below. If I get enough comments, then definitely I'll be making a video on that. Clear? Understood uh, what is the definition and these all the definition that we talked about are given by the IEC standards, right? So that is the definition of load break switch. Now, as I mentioned, the load break switch uh, you will find most commonly used in the ring um, main units or RMU, which is mostly used in the uh, ring main distribution. By the way, I have a video explaining what is ring main unit and what are the different distribution systems. If you are interested, link for those videos provided in the description. You can go and check it out for more details. So mostly you will see uh, the load brick switch are provided in these ring main units and when it is used uh, in the ring main unit many people call it as a ring switch also so ring switch load brick switch switch disconnector are the different name of a single device keep that thing in mind and also it you will find it most commonly used as a protection of distribution transformer as well so maybe if you go and see in your apartments you will find a transformer and just next to it a panel is also located if it is not a circuit breaker inside uh, which should be the case most of the time then it will be a load break switch only now this is a very very commonly used uh, equipment in the medium voltage switch gear clear understood now let us look at some of the uh, capabilities of a load break switch what are all the things that load break switch is capable of doing so first making and breaking of normal currents of course uh, this is the function of a switch as defined by the IEC it can make and break the normal system current plus it also provides isolating distance when in open position so it is also satisfying the requirements of disconnector which is defined by the IEC standards and the combination of these two things is basically a load break switch. But again, as I mentioned, the application of this is limited to distribution uh, sector only. The third capability is interrupting small capacitive and inductive currents, which is essential for disconnecting the unloaded overhead lines, transformer, cables, etc. So when you want to switch a line which is unloaded, then definitely there will be some trap charges and that switching capability should also be there with the load brake switch or if you are uh, switching a transfer unloaded transformer wherein the currents will be inductive that capability also carried by the load brake switch clear then uh, it also carry the maximum fault current for a specified duration now if you see the nameplate of a load brake switch you will find that a, a rating is mentioned as short time withstand current it could be let's say uh, 31.5 k for three second or one second so that current it can carry for three second or one second which is the abnormal current right understood so these are some of the capabilities of the load break switch and these make them very very popular in the medium voltage network you will find it uh, uh, in many many applications even in your apartments uh, in in some uh, what you can say uh, commercial buildings shopping malls and everywhere you will find load break switches are used and they also provide protection so you can also connect a fuse with them which we will talk about in a minute so now let us look at quickly the construction of uh, the load break switch which is very very simple by the way so the main part is this switching blade so basically you see this silver portion uh, silver colored portion which is the switching blade and this is uh, the main portion of the uh, load break switch and also since you are switching the currents it can be normal current it can be abnormal current there will be some sort of arc that is happening and to extinguish that you need to have some arc extinguishing chamber right so that is also there in the load break switch now this is not a, a dedicated device arc extinguishing chamber basically it is the uh, sheet metal in which this uh, load break switch is installed that acts as arc extinguishing chamber basically so we have two options here 
the air insulated load brake switch or the air blast load brake switch and the SF6 gas insulated uh, load brake switch which we will talk about in a minute. So that is arc extinguishing chamber. Just remember it's not a dedicated device it's basically the enclosure of uh, the uh, load brake switch or the enclosure in which the switching blades are mounted. Then uh, since it has to break the normal system current uh, it should operate at a specific speed. Now, if you have seen the opening of the high and extra high voltage disconnectors, they open very slow, right? And if the same thing is also happening here, then it will not work because then it is going to be definitely no doubt about that. So in order to safely make and break the currents, it should operate at a specific speed. And that is the reason why you also need a dedicated operating mechanisms for that. And mostly a spring mechanism is utilized. So these are the three main components you will find in a load brake switch and everything will be installed in a panel, sheet steel panel. Clear? Understood? Now moving on, as I mentioned, we have uh, two options here, the air insulated one and the gas insulated one. Let me show you the air insulated switch gear here. So here you can see this is the bus bar which is connected to the switch here and this is the outgoing portion. So this is basically connected in series of course. Uh, these are the switch blades what you can see here uh, let's see this is R phase Y phase and this is B phase and this is the mechanism that we discussed uh, which helps in closing and opening the contacts at a specific speed and since you see there is uh, everything is open here that means the insulation used is air so this is the air insulated uh, load brake switch or air blast load brake switch Right? The size of this is a little more compared to the SF6 gas uh, load brake switch that we have. And as I mentioned, uh, this load brake switch can also provide protection to transformer that is by utilizing a HRC fuse, high rupture capacity fuse. So you see the brown color portion here, this is basically the HRC fuse provided. And this is the load brake switch, air insulated load brake switch. If uh, some fault occurs, then this switches, uh, this fuses will blow, thereby protecting the transformer if that is connected to the load brake switch, right? Of course, once the fault occurs, you need to replace uh, these uh, HRC fuses. But this is also a very commonly used practice uh, to protect the distribution transformers. Clear? So that is air insulated load brake switch. Then we also have a gas insulated load brake switch. SF6 gas is most commonly used. So what you can see uh, on your screen is uh, SF6 load brake switch. This is a line mounted load brake switch. So it is directly connected to the tower. Uh, so of course saving of the lands as well directly connected to the tower. You don't need a dedicated space for the load brake switch. And you see it is very, very compact compared to the, what we saw uh, the AI, AIS version. Yes, and that is obvious because the properties, dielectric properties of SF6 gas is far better when we compare it with the air, right? So that is the SF6 gas field load brake switch. Clear? Understood the basic introduction about the load brake switch. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the switchgear, I have dedicated playlist uh, about the switchgear. I'll provide link for all those playlists down in the description. You can go and check it out. And if this video was helpful, then do comment helpful in the comment section. In that way, I'll understand this content is helping you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.